Okay, so I've done some videos recently uh, about Ubuntu Mate, uh, and I called it the best OS for Raspberry Pi. Uh, the version I'm using is the Desktopify version, created by uh, Wimpy from Wimpy's World YouTube channel. And uh, he works for Canonical, uh, who are the people who release Ubuntu Mate and various other flavors of Ubuntu. And uh, they do a really, really good job, and so much work has been done recently. Uh, and he did a just over an hour of a live stream recently. I didn't watch it live, I watched it afterwards. And uh, he changed a few things. So he enabled the FKMS driver, uh, he enabled uh, a boot splash screen, uh, he enabled Firefox hardware support, and he also disabled the overscan. So various different tweaks. Now you can do all this from the video. You can go through the video and you can apply the patches uh, and the little tweaks as, as he does it. Uh, or you could just download the new version. If you download uh, the server version of Ubuntu, as in my other Ubuntu video, and then uh, do an update now, it will be the latest version. But if you had it uh, before today, so before the 5th of July, then uh, doing a normal update won't update your system. So I figured I'd do a backup. Uh, I've installed the new system and I put it on an SD card. And uh, if I go here, if I launch Gparted, so it comes up uh, always with the default disk uh, first, which is what this operating system is running on. The second disk you'll see is a new install of Ubuntu Mate Desktopify versions. So with all the tweaks done, so completely up to date. And the bottom one is my, I've got an external drive because I realized I didn't have enough space on this 32 gig card to write a 32 gig image, uh, which is fair enough. So what I thought I'd do uh, is try and use GNOME disks to do it. I've already used it to extract the image, although it did come up with an error, so I'm not sure if that's worked correctly. So if you see here, new Ubuntu M, um, but even though it's only about six and a half gig, it comes up as 31.6 gig. Uh, so I figured I'd see if I could shrink it before I save the image. So let's try that with this image. So we're we on the second there. So this is the second one. So this is an SD card in a USB adapter that contains a, a brand new fresh install of Ubuntu Mate. So bang up to date. So if I right click on that and do resize, I can get this pretty small. Now I thought I'd leave it a little bit of room to breathe just in case it needs to be uh, expanded once it's there. So I'm gonna say, Let's call it just seven. A nice even 7,000 megabytes. Right, so let's hit resize on that and hit tick and apply. And come back when that's done. Okay, so I successfully changed the size of the partition to seven gig, everything went fine. Um, I then used GNOME disks to try and write that image. Uh, so if I click on that, when I saw this, I, I thought it was gonna work uh, because it only shows two bits starred and this shows as free space. Uh, and I then used the create disk image uh, and tried to create the disk image and it just ended up creating basically another one like this uh, and it was still 32 gig. So I moved over to Raspbian and uh, I tried a load of things and uh, I'd had some suggestions and uh, I tried about three different ways of doing it with Terminal. Two of them seemed to work very well, got right to the end, and then they came up with an error and they didn't save the file. So after all of those failed attempts, uh, I just got an eight gig micro SD card, popped it in my Pi, uh, used Raspberry Pi Imager to install the Ubuntu server, and then installed Desktopify version of Ubuntu Mate. And uh, this is the one. Uh, and you can see it only comes up as 7.25. There's not very much free space there anyway. So uh, I didn't really need to go through the process, but I wanted to see how it worked. Now it might work fine with Raspbian, uh, but it didn't work with this version of Ubuntu Mate Desktopify. But I have uh, uploaded this version to Google Drive. So this is the new updated version of Ubuntu Mate Desktopify. Uh, it's available now, link in the description. And uh, I might look at it in the future of, of doing it in another way. But to be fair, my way of putting it on just on a smaller card is pretty much about the same sort of size image anyway. 
Okay, so now I've uploaded it to Google Drive, it's time to download it again just to test it. Uh, so I've got a little text file. This link will be in the description of the video. Uh, so copy the link from the description and paste it into Chrome or whatever your browser of choice is and download. Okay, so that's all downloaded. Uh, so let's open up my downloads folder and you can see the file there, which is 7.2 gig. So I need to now pop a micro SD card in a USB adapter into the Pi and then launch Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose OS, use a custom. There's my file in the downloads folder, hit open. Choose SD card and write. Okay, so that's all done. So now we can shut down and reboot with the newly created SD card. Okay, here is the newly created card. It's a Magix card and it's got blue on it because I've got two of these and I wanted to be able to tell which one was which. So let's pop it in the Pi. So this is my Ubuntu Mate updated desktopify version. And let's see how quick it starts up and how it starts up as well. And while it's starting up, I've got a problem with my Pi Moroni fan shim. For some reason, it doesn't seem to connect properly now and you have to push it against the pins. So if I put it on, so if I put it on, that's how it goes on. For some reason I have to kind of push it in one direction to make it connect. Anyway, back to Ubuntu. That's the new splash screen that wasn't there before. You'll see that it fills the screen completely now because the disable overscan has been enabled. And the password is Lee PSP video. I'm going to log into my Wi-Fi and then switch to screen capture because in Wimpy's video he showed uh, a video test and it didn't run very well. Well, it, it appeared to not run very well because of his screen capture. So I've got quite a reasonable screen capture device so I thought I'd run that same video and show you how well it plays. Switch back into screen capture. Okay, so here's the same YouTube video that Wimpy showed in his video, and uh, as you can see, it looks smoother than when he was showing it. Uh, it isn't the smoothest of videos to show, though, because it's very, very frantic, very fast moving, but it and a lot of scrolling, but it also is at 24 frames a second. So it doesn't ever look completely smooth on anything, but I think you can see that it definitely looks better, and it's not dropping any frames. There's one more thing to add, uh, and I'll cut to a bit of Wimpy's video where he made a bit of an announcement. So, we have been working on a tool a bit like Raspberry Config, but different. And at some point in the future, you will find out about that. And that will be the way to do those similar kinds of configuration changes that you need without having to um, edit files by hand. Um, I don't want to give too much more away than that because one of my colleagues has been working on that for quite some time and I think it's pretty cool so um, yeah watch this space uh, there's something coming okay so I hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe